Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. It's been a few weeks since Nvidia announced 40 Series and right now it's time to talk about exactly what that means to you. And today we're taking a look at this brand new stonkingly huge potent and hungry RTX 4090 Founders Edition. But it's not what it seems. And you know what else isn't what it seems as well? your YouTube sub feed, because YouTube's been unsubbing people from our channel again, so make sure you actually subscribe, notifications turned on, and if you're not subscribed yet, do yourself a favor, do that now. We've got lots of really cool and exciting things coming up, and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of that stuff, but right now, it's time for a Thick Boy Shakedown. Let's get it. I'm gonna make this easy for you guys and I want this to be easy for you guys to understand as well. And I'm gonna try not to get too technical because I can see that for some people, your eyes will just start to glaze over. But the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 Founders Edition is built on NVIDIA's brand new Ada Lovelace architecture and features 24 gigs of memory with 21 gigabits of throughput. And in terms of power delivery and power consumption, it requires one of the new 16 pin PCIe power connectors, but also comes with an adapter for that new 12 VH power. However, we didn't test with that cable because we didn't need to. The RTX 4090 founders will also consume on average around about 450 watts of full tilt, but this is just a guide for power consumption and I'll come back to this. We'll talk a little bit more about power consumption later. As far as testing these cards, we actually retested a total of 11 additional graphics cards in addition to the 4090, obviously, on a new test bench that is far newer than our old GPU testing setup. We're in the process of retesting everything at the moment and we can only test stuff that we have on hand. So there are a few key GPUs that are missing that we just have never had. We also only use these gaming based 3D benchmarks and that's kind of what this video is all about. And we're gonna cover content creation workloads at a later date. Now we don't include 1% highs or lows with these tests because for us, it just introduces a whole lot of extra testing. And I feel that an average frame rate gives you guys a good indication of the expected performance on a system that is configured like our testing hardware. And also I just wanted to mention, these are canned benchmarks. So those numbers might not really be applicable to real world game performance. For the power situation, we actually use one of MSI's brand new MEG AI 1300P PSUs that have the new PCIe Gen 5 power cable out of the box. And that just helped us streamline all the testing because we just used a single cable for this GPU right here. So shout outs to MSI for sending that over. We actually received this GPU quite a few weeks ago and we tested it the second that we got drivers and I, I think that was probably around the 27th of last month. So yeah, it's already been a few weeks since we did all the testing. So all the testing you're seeing in this video is accurate as of the day of the day that the press drivers got released and everything is subject to change as usual. We also only test the out of the box figures with these GPUs because there's actually a vast majority of users who won't overclock their GPUs. We also tested everything that you're seeing in this video with resizable bar enabled for both AMD and Nvidia GPUs. And unfortunately, we don't have any Intel Arc GPUs, so we don't have any results for those cards here. We use testing that is repeatable and standardized and not gameplay testing because those results cannot be repeated all the time and there's too many variables and ultimately they can be unreliable at times. And this actually leads into the first thing I wanted to address with the 4090. We noticed that at 1440p, and you're gonna see this in the benchmarks as well, a lot of them became a lot more CPU bound. And when I mean a lot, I mean a lot more. And I ended up validating this with Steve from Hardware Unboxed who actually tested his 4090 with the 5800X 3D. So make sure you throw our fellow Aussies a sub while you're at and I'll put a link to their channel in the description. This means that we're seeing this CPU bound behavior with both AMD and Intel CPUs. And since we're using an Intel based test bench, I hope that made sense. Now we'll be using these benchmarks for every single GPU benchmarking video going forward for Windows. Our Linux benchmarks will be similar, but because we don't have Linux drivers for the 4090 yet, we couldn't test it. We really, really wanted to test that, but you know, sometimes that's just how it goes. All right, I can see your eyes glazing over, but let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1080p, then no surprises here for me personally, and this shouldn't surprise you either, given that GPUs at 1080p have been CPU bound for many years. However, even being CPU bound, it does show that the 4090 is vastly more powerful than the rest of the field. Well, at least in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 
Now, the jump in performance for 1440p would significantly shadow the Tomb Raider as well, but as you'll find out later, this is not what it seems. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, this is great news given how popular 1440p is, although this is a bit of an aging title. Where the 4090 really shines though, is at 4K. These new cards seem to be really built from the ground up at an architectural level for 4K. The uplift here is, to simply put it, pretty darn ridiculous. We're seeing around a 62% performance uplift from the 3090 Ti and around 74% uplift from the 3090. All right, time for Unigen Superposition. For these tests, we do it the same way we usually do. We use three tests in total. We use 4K Optimized, 1080p Extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. Now, Superposition is a great benchmark if you want to get an idea of the performance of your own systems because it's a free benchmark you can go and download. And we use it because it allows you to compare the results that you guys get with our results here. So, yeah. First up with the 1080p Extreme benchmark, you'll notice that this benchmark is highly GPU bound and it's an absolute worst case scenario for any type of benchmark. We're seeing about a 50% uplift between the 4090 and the 3090 Ti and around 61% above the 3090. At 1440p, it's more of the same. However, the uplift isn't as much as you could expect. It's about 17% faster than the 3090 Ti and about 24% faster than the 3090. However, again at 4K, the 4090 absolutely storms past the 3090 Ti and delivers more than 100 frames per second more performance with a 75% increase in performance. That's pretty insane. Now, we wanted to change this up a bit by running some benchmarks for a title that's become a lot more popular again since the Edge Runner series on Netflix, Cyberpunk 2077. We actually did this with our new CPU testing as well, but we did this one a little bit differently because AMD FSR is supported on both NVIDIA and AMD GPUs and Intel GPUs as well. And I wanted to see what the story was if we tested this at high settings with FSR set to quality mode with no ray tracing to even the playing field. So this is just rasterized performance. Let's start off at 1080p. At 1080p, it turns out the 4090 isn't much faster than the 3090 Ti. And the 6900 XT is about 12% faster than the 4090. Now we've seen this behavior with AMD GPUs in Cyberpunk at 1080p before, even with FSR disabled. Now at 1440p, the 4090 is 10% faster than the 6900 XT and about 8% faster than the 3090 Ti. Once again though, at 4K, the story is very different because compared to the 3090 Ti, we're seeing a whopping 62% increase in performance and compared to the 6900 XT, it's got a 75% increase above that. That's not the whole story with Cyberpunk though. Nvidia actually gave us access to the DLSS 3.0 beta build because I was actually interested in the performance difference between DLSS 3.0 and what the difference would be if we use ray tracing and if we cranked the settings up all the way. We'll start from the top of this graph. At 1080p with DLSS 3.0 set to quality mode, we saw a 92% increase in performance from without using any of that. This is with ray tracing turned on again, remember? At 1440p, we saw a 122% increase in performance. And at 4K, we saw a 205% increase in performance. Obviously, this test is pretty subjective given that this is a beta build and also that DLSS 3.0 is only supported on NVIDIA's 40 series GPUs. However, this is still a pretty interesting result. Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance since the 3D engine that Basemark's built on has been designed from the low level with the Vulkan API calls to really take advantage of your 3D hardware. Now, I think a lot of people actually overlook Vulkan, but I still think it's very important. And be aware though, Basemark has a very, 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 very high number scale, so the differences might seem a lot higher than they actually are. At 1080p with Vulkan in Basemark, the 4090 absolutely stomps the rest of the cards. It's about 47% faster than the 3090 Ti and about 54% faster than the 3090. Even at lower resolutions, Vulkan is always more telling of how a card has been designed. 
At 1440p, the increases are slightly higher than what we saw at 1080p, and given what we know about Vulkan and how the API interacts with the hardware and how it scales, this is no surprise because we see a 57% increase from the 3090 Ti and a 67% increase over the 3090. Remember, this is increase, not difference. This again has been echoed at 4K with the increase being around 67% from the 3090 Ti and around 79% over the 3090. Crazy. Lastly, we've added Horizon Zero Dawn to our benchmarking suite. Now, this game is old in PlayStation land, but in PC land, it's not that old. And this is a pretty popular one because just like base mark, we can see some strengths and some weaknesses. At 1080p in Horizon Zero Dawn, the 6900 XT is the fastest card of the batch and it's about 5% faster than the 4090. We also saw this with Cyberpunk, however, the Delta is not as large here in Horizon Zero Dawn. Moving on to 1440p, we're seeing the inverse here with the 4090 being faster than the rest of the pack and being around 6% faster than that 6900 XT. Lastly, we're seeing what we've seen with every 4K benchmark, we're seeing a 47% increase in performance over the 3090 Ti and a 51% increase over the 3090. Okay, so the 3D performance at 4K is pretty impressive, but how are the thermals? Now for these, we ran our one hour stress test in Ida 64 and we couldn't get the RTX 4090 Founders Edition above 71 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. We also recorded memory temperature here and we couldn't see it rising above 72 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. So it, from what I can tell, it runs a little bit cooler than previous generation Ampere cards. But be aware though, as usual, we're running on an open air test bench. The results in a closed system will be far different from what we observe, but we test this this way because we always do all of our testing on an open air test environment and it's consistent with everything that we tested and retested over our testing period. I said testing a lot there, but you guys get what I mean. As far as power consumption, we observed the 4090 founders hitting a board power draw, maxing out at 465 watts at full load over the period of one hour. Even though Nvidia says the TGP would be around 450 watts, but it's always, you know, a couple watts either way, give or take. But 465 watts is a lot for a founder's card. We also observed the 4090 to be audible over our stress testing period. Now you gotta remember again, I always say this, but this is an open air test system and you're going to hear absolutely everything. I didn't notice any coil whine or anything like that. In a closed system, I gotta say, you might not even hear this card at all. Now, acoustic observations, they just make more sense than, you know, recording what it actually is because the numbers don't really make sense to a regular punter. Acoustics are only tangible if the system's sitting right next to you on a table. Most of the time you got your headphones on, so you're probably not gonna hear it anyway. So what are my thoughts on the RTX 4090 Founders Edition? Well, the performance is very impressive at 4K and I think that's what this card is really designed to do play 4K titles and play them really, really well. The 4090 in that regard is looking like quite a big generational leap, especially in 4K performance. That being said though, as I predicted, and I've been saying this since the announcement to people in our Discord, and this is a general rule of thumb, people need to lower their expectations. Some of the benchmarks we saw pre-launch were results from very carefully crafted marketing types whose job is to make these cars look good. Now, on the marketing side of that though, I think they were mostly right. However, things like being CPU bound at 1440p and the fact that DLSS 3.0 would only be enabled on Ada Lovelace GPUs was something that they either didn't mention or they largely glossed over. They did not They did say that, but it's largely to make people spend giant wads of cash on the 4090 because this thing is very, very expensive. We knew that the 4090 would be a killer card. There's no questioning that, there's no doubt, but just like every other flagship product, this card is not for everyone. You'll most likely need a new power supply, you'll need a large enough case to put this card into, and this is the founder's card. And this is smaller than all of the partner cards that I've seen, although we only have a founder's card, but you know, from what I can tell, 
This thing is ridiculously huge. Look at it compared to my head. It is absolutely massive. On the flip side of that though, you do have to feel a little bit sorry for the people who just a few months ago forked out a whole wad of cash for an RTX 3090 Ti. The 3090 Ti was Nvidia's test bench for the 4090. Don't get that twisted, that's exactly what it was. And things like that really annoy me about Nvidia. You could have been the chosen one to you guys. Now it's, it's always for this cash grab and I get that they're a company and they wanna make money, but I think the 3090 Ti was a bit of a dog act. Just gotta call it how it is. Overall though, I gotta admit, I'm pretty impressed with what I've personally seen from the 4090 performance wise at 4K. The 4K performance for me is particularly impressive given that that's the resolution I currently game at. The real decision is one that you have to make when any new product launches on launch day. Do you want to pay the early adopter tax and jump on board right now? Or do you want to wait for the 50 series? Like everyone's always like, oh, I'm just going to wait for the next generation. The truth is it's completely up to you. I don't care. I can't make you do anything. Personally, I would wait and see what AMD has to offer with its upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs. They said November 3rd. So I think you're going to want to make sure you subscribe for that and make your decision then. But if you don't want to wait, and you have a huge pile of cash laying around, kind of like Scrooge McDuck, you can either dive into it or slaying it in your bed or whatever. I would say go ahead and buy the 4090 because this is a very impressive GPU at 4K. Now, if you're interested in grabbing the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 Founders Edition, it's going for 1,599 US dollars or around 2,959 Aussie dollars at the time of filming. And it will be available starting on the 12th of October, assuming, right? you'll actually be able to buy one because of the stock. But given how expensive this card is, I'd say there's a good chance you'll be able to pick one of these up if you really, really wanted to. At the end of the day, all I'm doing with these videos is giving you guys the numbers that we found and it's up to you to make the decision on whether or not it's something you're interested in or if it's something you think is worth your hard earned money. Just like anything in the world, I can't make you do anything, but really, if you've got like a bathtub full of cash and you really want a GPU, you know, right now this is probably the one to get. But otherwise, I would say, and I mean, I'm kind of guilty of, of telling people not to do this, but it's only a couple of weeks away from RDNA 3's proper announcement. So I would just wait till then. If you like this video, you know what to do, please like and subscribe and tell YouTube that you love the video and hit the dislike button twice if you hate it because we know it doesn't do anything. And also make sure you guys are subscribed because YouTube has been doing this unsubbing thing. We've been noticing, we've been getting heaps of comments, we're getting tweets about it and all that stuff. So make sure you actually subscribe to the channel if you like the videos, like, like this one in particular. Get subscribed if you're not already. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and this is one gigantor GPU. It's a very, very potent 4K gaming beast. I cannot wait to get my hands on some other 4090s for a bit of comparison. Let us know what you guys want to see in the comments and I will catch you later because I've got some games to play now. Well. I'll try and play some games in the near future. Thanks for watching.